Thanks for joining us. I'm Don Nelson with your six on your side headlines for Wednesday, January 9th. The Idaho Department of Correction appealed a U.S. District Court ruling that ordered the state of Idaho to give gender reassignment surgery to a transgender inmate last month. A judge gave Idaho Department of Correction six months to give that surgery to Adri Edmo, an inmate who was born male but identifies as a woman. Edmo is serving three to ten years in the men's prison south of Boise for sexual abuse of a child under 16. Now, in one of Governor Brad Little's first moves in office, the Department of Correction has appealed that ruling. Governor Little said, quote, the hardworking taxpayers of Idaho should not be forced to pay for a prisoner's gender reassignment surgery when individual insurance plans won't even cover it. We cannot divert critical public dollars away from our focus on keeping the public safe and rehabilitating offenders. End of quote. Edmo's sentence will be satisfied in two and a half years. If the procedure is performed, it would be only the second time in the nation this has happened. The case will now go to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals for further proceedings. We are now on day 19 of the government shutdown and colleges nationwide are taking a bit of a hit. Due to the shutdown, colleges are unable to verify a student's financial aid eligibility, a process in which the college draws upon the IRS. Luckily for now, most college students already have their financial aid taken care of for this semester. There may be an issue for CWI to receive our funds um, from the Department of Education, but as far as uh, they'll still be able to apply and start classes um, and they'll be able to finish spring semester. And as long as the government shutdown is resolved by the end of the semester, Smith says it won't impact financial and eligibility moving into future semesters, specifically at CWI. Concerns about Russian hacking and election cybersecurity have state experts teaching new ways to protect Idaho's elections. Today, the Secretary of State held a cybersecurity training event designed to emulate an outside attack. 120 election officials from around the state were given a threat scenario designed by Harvard University. And there's a heightened sense of urgency. And now we focus on it with a much more heightened level of attention. Uh, it's, it's woven into the fabric of everything we do. And that's why we brought this exercise to these local officials today uh, to help them make that transition and start to move into some of those best practices. Houck says the lead up to the 2018 midterm election changed everything because there was a heightened sense of vulnerability nationwide. Students from Boise State's computer science program helped facilitate today's training. Ever been to the hospital and left with a deep hole in your pocket? Well, you're not alone. A new federal rule is trying to change all that, requiring hospitals to post prices online. But the price on the list probably won't be the price on your bill. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, the new regulations require hospitals to list everything from medications to cost of procedures, which is where it can get a little confusing since everything is listed separately. There's thousands of items on the list and insurance plays a key role. At the end of the day, it really may not matter what they charge. It may come down to what is the agreement with your insurance. And so you may see that there's a better rate at a freestanding imaging center, but maybe they're not in, in network. Healthcare experts recommend checking with your provider before making a final decision, but the new rule allows patients to at least have a ballpark of what out-of-pocket charges they're facing. We'll have that full story coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. Now, Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval with the On Your Side forecast. More mild temperatures coming in today. 50 degrees, second to consecutive day in Boise, touching 50. Amazing 49 in Mountain Home and much milder in Twin Falls today, getting up to 46, scouring out that cold air that was stuck in the valleys yesterday. And another mild day tomorrow, the wind is going to settle down. That's going to be a huge change coming in tomorrow. In the meantime, we've had some light rain showers, mostly isolated and in the mountains below 5,000 feet. Freezing levels have been up to 5,500 feet an hour, snow levels anyway. There's been some snow around Sun Valley and uh, above the McCall area. Moisture continues to stream in from the south and west. That will continue. However, it will just start to dry out as a warm front pushes through tomorrow for your Thursday. And that warmer weather is going to make its way up from the south and just push right on in, giving us some very 
pleasant conditions in the afternoon. If you've got outdoor plans on Thursday tomorrow, just remember in the afternoon that sun is going to shine and as it does, it will bring us amazing conditions. So we'll get more sunshine. The wind will go calm during the middle part of the day as the sunshine is increasing just as the temperatures are soaring. So don't be surprised or alarmed if it's cloudy in the morning and thinking where's this amazing day. It's January 10th. But to get this type of weather in the afternoon, I tell you, you will enjoy it. If you're in the valley, get a chance to get outside because it will be the water cooler talk of the day tomorrow. And then the sunshine will continue Friday, Saturday and Sunday as high pressure builds in. It dries everything out. However, cool air will start to drain into the valleys, trying to form an inversion. Hopefully we won't get that much cloud cover. I think we'll have a lot of sunshine. It will cool down to 40 by Sunday, but still above average. I'll keep you updated right here. Keep checking back for updates and you can go to my Facebook page. I just put an update on there and don't forget on my uh, the six in your side Facebook page coming up tonight about 8 45 i will be live answering your questions about the forecast for the weekend or any travel plans you may have we'll see you then